as many of you already know, our campaigns um, started with very few resources. And in fact, we are now still vastly outmatched um, in terms of fundraising. There is a more than 13 to one ratio compared to the other side. But um, but we've, uh, uh, we are now leading in two very reputable statewide polls done recently, and none of this would have been possible without an army of um, supporters um, who have been enthusiastically and tirelessly working for us during this campaign. And, um, and as some of you already know, over 90% of our donors are Asian American, and many of them have contributed small dollar amounts, um, some, many of them repeatedly, but this is the army that um, of donors and volunteers that we are super proud of. And so today um, we're gonna present you with um, various speakers on our side who will talk a bit about this um, wonderful phenomenon. Um, we will start with Betty Chu, who is our honorary co-chair. She is also a trailblazer, um, the first, a, um, the first uh, Chinese American woman to co-found and run a bank, um, the first Chinese American woman to pass the state bar uh, from Southern California and the former mayor of Monterey. Um, our next speaker after that um, will be um, Ling Kong, who is uh, one of our um, wonderful supporters. She is a, um, a a tech engineer and environmentalist, as well as a city commissioner in Milpitas. Um, and then after that, we'll hear from Joy Chen, who is the director at large for our campaign. Um, and then after Joy, we'll um, wrap up with Wen Yuan Wu, who is the um, executive director of the No on Prop 16 campaign. And I'll say a few more words about each speaker as we go along. But Betty, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining us on this Zoom, and I apologize uh, that my son put in a new modem and I can't seem to Zoom in on the meeting with the um, uh, camera. But anyway, uh, I am an octogenarian who not only has observed racism and sexism during my lifetime, but have also been involved directly in having racism and sexism used against me. Now, I grew up a block away from Skid Row because of the Chinese Exclusion Act prohibiting Chinese Americans from owning property in the 1800s, and that lasted until after I was born. And as a result of living um, a block away from Skid Row, we interacted with many different minority um, communities uh, in that area. So I have had public education racism. I have had public employment racism as well as um, racism in terms of public contracting. So um, this is why I am so passionate about No on 16, because having worked to have SCA 5 that passed the California State Senate on using racism uh, to, uh, to rescind Proposition 209 as it relates to public education, uh, I was very astonished to see that Proposition 16 now goes beyond public education. It goes into public employment as well as public contracting. And I am so passionate about it because not only have I experienced this racism, but I have mentored uh, some young people who were admitted under Proposition 209. And as minority students, the psychological effect on them prevented them really from doing as well as they could, thinking that they did not, um, they were not admitted to college and particularly to law school because of their abilities, 
but because of race, uh, because it was a race-based preference. So I, <laughs> I am fighting for the future also of the Asian American community in California, because if Proposition 16 passes, not only will it affect public employment, education, and public contracting, it will also spill over into the private field, the private companies. And not only will it do that, it will spread in terms of other states following suit. So I am very concerned about Proposition 16, which I consider really the most dangerous proposition on the November ballot because it follows a person from preschool all the way to retirement since uh, the racial preferences can be used with reference to um, retirement benefits. And this, of course, will have the same effect that the Chinese Exclusion Act had in the 1800s, which is to um, limit the community population that we have in California. So for that reason, I urge all of you, particularly the reporters, to be neutral and taking a look at the statistics that are provided on both sides and come up with a determination as to the the statistics have supported successful graduation rates that exceeds the graduation rates of those during the affirmative action era.